It's the Big East Football and NBN, and we are here in New Rochelle, New York, this week for the matchup between the New York Patriots and the New York Crusaders. And we welcome you to Big East Football here on NBN, everybody. I'm Stephen Err. The Patriots are coming off yet another win. They are now just one win away from a perfect regular season here in the first season of Big East Football as they defeated the Brooklyn Bengals last week out in Brooklyn 16-8. to Just the second time they give up any points at all this season. Meanwhile, the Crusaders are coming off a game which they needed to win over the Empire State Wolfpack to take over second place in the Big East Football standings. But unfortunately, they came away with an 18-0 loss in that game. So now they're starting third place in the face in the Big East Football standings. Meanwhile, the Patriots will look to finish their regular season undefeated, and it will be their final regular season home game here in franchise history. Let's get you ready for kickoff. We're ready to go. Kickoff coming up right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to rock. We're ready to roll. The New York Crusaders have won the toss. They had further the second half. And linebacker number 11, David Brown, will kick off. Let's go. We're underway from Rue Show, New York, and this one will be taken by number two. That is Christian Ramsey. If we have a name right, we'll get your name in a second. And Ramsey break it away. Getting to midfield and finally knocked down near the 40-yard line. A great start field positioning for the Patriots. Saw that a few weeks ago in their game against the Maine Norsemen. But they started it very well. Each, well, started each of the drives very well. Let's see if we got that name right. That is, it'll be number two, Christian Ramsey. And the kickoff. So we'll see the Patriots offense come out again for the first time. As again, the shares won the toss. They defer to the second half. And so let's see who's at a quarterback here. We're going to zoom in and see if we can see you guys. Should be and there he is. Yes, it is number one, Marquise Jernigan, who had three total touchdowns, two passing, one rushing in that 32 day victory over the Maine Norseman in the Big East Football and NBN debut back on April 20th up in Portland, Maine. Now we are here in New Rochelle, New York, home of the Patriots. We're here at Joseph S. Focina Fields here in New Rochelle, about 25 minutes away from the Bronx. The Patriots played some of their home games last season. I'm not sure if they played there this year. I don't believe so. That was the last year they played at SUNY Maritime out in the Bronx. A very beautiful place to play. First play from scrimmage here for the Patriots. It'll be first down. Ball is officially at the 40. And Jordan goes through the air. Passes. Caught by number 13. And in, getting into Crusader territory just like that. And it looks like uh, Malik Wright. There he is. He had the lone touchdown in the win over the Empire State Wolfpack, which is looking right now like the Big East Football Championship game. Of course, that's why we play the game. We don't know exactly who's going to play in the Big East Championship. We'll get to more than that in a little bit. But the ball to the 49-yard line. So by game 11, to be first down to 10 once again for the Patriots. Jernigan in the shotgun. And Jernigan looks as though throws a middle pass caught by Colin. Another pass to the 38. That's another first down. That's two for two on first down. Two plays, two first down for the Patriots. And that is one Colin making the catch there. Ball now at the Crusader already at the Crusader 38-yard line. First down, New York Patriots. Look at finisher season with an undefeated six in the record. We're here today. Crusaders coming off a bad loss last week, 8 to nothing against the Empire State Wolfpack. A game which, they, if they had won, they would have gotten second place in the Big East football. We're looking at 1-2 and two right now here today. First down, Patriots. Journey again, high snap. Pumps. Now he's going to take off. And Journey again to the 25 and out of bounds. About the 21-yard line. Another run there for the man that scored a touchdown in the 32-day victory of the main Norseman. A couple weeks ago, he also had a couple touchdowns last week in their win over the Brooklyn Bengals. Bengals excuse me. 16-8, low-scoring affair, and the second time this season that the Patriots gave up any points at all. Three shutout victories for these Patriots looking to finish off. What is, as of right now, is their final season in franchise history. Looking to finish undefeated. They are currently a 5-0, and looking to get the 6-0, and headed to the postseason, the number one overall seed. Of course, they would host the playoff game, and we're still waiting to see who will host the championship and when, where, why, and how. Stay tuned for that. Patriots have the ball at the Crusader 22 yard line first down. Here's Kadeem Wilson going in motion. Jernigan throws short to Wilson. He makes the catch, but then he falls right at the gut. <laughs> he falls at the line of scrimmage and goes absolutely nowhere. So nothing new for Kadeem Wilson, who had the Big East football play of the week in week number four. And that game against the Main Norseman. The third and yard touchdown on a third down and nine nonetheless. It's a lot of threes, a lot of nines in that one. Of course, the touchdown pass went from one to nine. Jernigan rolling out and found Wilson for a 39-yard score on third down and nine. Now second down, Jernigan. Pressure, he's going to roll out to his right, and he's going to take off again. Now it looks like he might be throw, trying to throw off his back foot to the end zone, and it is almost intercepted. Very close, number 29, Brian Augustin was there. And it was intended for number 13 there. There's right again, and he's like, uh, what was that, man? He's like, come on, man, what is that? 
Not the best of the throws there by Jernigan. It's going to go third down and 10 here for the Patriots. Unfamiliar territory for this undefeated team here, facing a third down here. And we saw that game against the Norsemen. They didn't have a kicker. I don't think they have a kicker here today either. So if they don't make this third down conversion, we might see them go for it here on fourth down, try to get the first score of the game. But let's see what they do here on third down and 10 now. Ball still at the 22-yard line. Scoreless here in the first quarter. Again, let's gentlemen like we did, unlike we did actually in the game in Portland. We did now. We do not have a running clock here today in New Rochelle. I will I'll wait to see what the refs tell us as far as when the end of the first quarter is, so on and so forth. Third down and ten for the Patriots. Jernigan over the middle to the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots! And there he is, right with the redemption. And the Patriots are on the board. First here in New Rochelle. It's six nothing. And well, where our camera is, you can see there is a drum line here right behind the soccer goalpost here, the gentlemen. They came out of nowhere just a few minutes before kickoff. I'm not exactly sure where they came from. Here, cheer on the Patriots, I assumably. And again, journey in to right for the first touchdown of the game. And here we go again. The Patriots are going to go for two here. Try to make it eight nothing. Again, they they were very well. And that game against the Norsemen, they're going to get the two-point conversions alone. Two-point conversion here for the Patriots. High step to Jurgen. Hands off to Montgomery. Tajay Montgomery going backwards. And Tajay Montgomery going nowhere. So after starting three for three last time we saw them against the Norsemen on two-point conversions, they start 0 for one here. But on a third down and 10, they a 22-yard touchdown from Marquise Jernigan to Akeem Wright. And it's 6-0 New York Patriots over the New York Crusaders. We'll be right back. You're watching Big East Football right here in NBN. Patriots striking quick and early here in Rochelle. They lead the New York Crusaders 6-0. You're watching the Big East Football here in NBN. I'm Steve Hurd. Thank you all for joining us here from New Rochelle. And that's a live football. Tick tock on March number 6. Got your name here in a moment. And he is going to be balled out at about the 40-yard line. That's where the Crusaders start with the ball for the first time on offense. As we zoom in now and try to get you number six, if we have one here for the New York Crusaders. And that would be wide receiver Elias, Elias Foley coming in for the kickoff there for the Crusaders. So let's see who's in a quarterback because the Crusaders have like four quarterbacks listed on their roster here. Yes, four Crusaders. Number zero, Charles McCrea. Number eight, Mike James. Number 10, Joshua Jefferson. And number 18, Juanik Bannerman. And we'll see here in a moment who the Crusaders hell have starting at quarterback for them here as they now trail 6 nothing against the Patriots. By the way, it's not the first time the Patriots and Crusaders are meeting. It's the first time in Big East football, but not the first time overall. This is the fourth meeting ever between these two teams. Patriots lead the series 3 nothing. These teams met last year in the Independent Football Association semifinal because, of course, there was only three teams. Patriots went out to win that one over the Crusaders and eventually lost to the Connecticut Falcons, eight to nothing in the IFA Championship for that league. Joined the, the Tribal Football League and became Big East Football. I didn't see a number. It looks like number one and a quarterback. Number zero, excuse me. And the handoff to the one there is just Sean Chrome's. Chrome's breaking away. Still going to the thirty, out to thirty-five, and he might have actually lost about five yards on that one. Well, let's see. So what a quarterback is number zero, Charles McCrea, and he is the short man here under center. He hands off there again. That was number number one to Sean Sean Combs. I said Combs, Mike Combs, excuse me, folks. And he might have lost five yards on that one. He's back at the 35-yard line. So Crusaders going backwards early here. Patriots defense is dominating. Again, this team's only given up 16 points all season long. That's incredible. They have three shutouts, and they give up 16 points in two games. Of course, they give up eight points against the New York. The, uh, excuse me, the main, main Norseman. And they gave eight points last week against the Brooklyn Bengals. But they still remain at 5-0 and on the year. Number one defense in Big East. So second down and 15 for the Crusaders. And miscommunication there. It's going to be McCrea takes it to three flags on the field, including a pink flag. Wow. I've never seen a pink flag before in my life, folks. This is the first time for everything. Well, let's check. There's three markers. We got face mask against the Patriots. And so the Crusaders get away with one there. A face mask against the Patriots get the Crusaders and an automatic first down. We're going to zoom in just a little bit to get. We don't want to get everybody here on the sideline. Try to get everybody on the field there. And the best possible view is we always do here on the Broadcast Network. 
And they're putting the football at the Patriots 48 yard line. And that's a big penalty there. Big penalty for the Patriots defense. They do not want to give up 15 free yards. Let's see if their defense can make a stop here. Now that the Crusaders are inside Patriot territory, and here they come, returning it to the 48 yard line. We'll have an automatic first following the penalty. 6 0 Patriots here in the first quarter. We don't have time running. Curry in the shotgun. He'll fake the handoff. He'll take off again, and this time he gets back to the line of scrimmage, if that. So we're going around, folks. As again, we already know the New York Patriots might be playing their final regular season home game in franchise history. They might be shutting it down here after the end of the season. Of course, they have two games scheduled for either June 8th or June 9th, according to Commissioner Mason Morgan. We're hoping it's June 8th because that would be better for my scheduling, but that's another story for another time. Patriots have one championship in their nine-year history, the 2019 Independent Conference Championship, and when they played in the East Coast Football League, later, believe it or not. Not a, lot, not a lot of people are big fans of the East Coast Football League or owner Jim Harmon. But even David Patterson once worked with Jim Harmon in the East Coast Football League. <laughs> a lot of beef there. There's a lot of beef, a lot of guys here in Summer Pro Football. That's just the world of Summer Pro Football. So second down, it should be about 10 here, maybe at 11. Might have actually lost the order there. McCray rolling out. And he's going to take off. Oh, he's got to throw, throw. So the sideline pass is caught. And I didn't see look at number 18. Might actually be Bannerman, who's a quarter, who's this is the quarterback, but playing receiver there. Let's see. I'm get a Dan number for you there. Look like Bannerman. And let's see where plays the football. And I'm not exactly sure who made the catch. A little scuffle there on the sideline. A different one than Jernigan. Back to the action. Second down, or third down, excuse me, it should be. Oh no, then Marguerite's first down. So here we go. McCray, pressure, breaks away from one, chucks it off his back foot going out of bounds. And the one hit catch by, by Wilson on the sideline. Pass is incomplete. And now it'll be second down. So once again, the Patriots might be playing their last Game, regular season game here in franchise history. Again, win here today. They'll finish the season 6-0. Perfect for undefeated regular season. They don't want overall seed. They will host the playoff game. Now, I'm not exactly sure where. It might be here in Rochelle. might be in the Bronx. It'll be in New York. We can tell you that much. And that will be June 1st. And if we look at the standings right now, unofficially, at first they will pack in second place. They will host the playoff game. They are out of Long Island, New York. So a little ways away from here in New Rochelle. Third place are the New York Crusaders. And in fourth place, it's either the Brooklyn Bengals or the Staten Island Hurricanes. Second down. McCray, pressure, and down he goes! Into the arms of number 27. Let's get you a name here, folks. Number 27 coming in with the sack, not letting McCray get away. And I'll pull it in, no, I can run him any time. <laughs> Let's see if we have number 27 on our roster. Or the Patriots. It doesn't look like we have. Here he is. Dewan Skinner. Making the sack. It's going to be third down in the minivan here for the Crusaders. And they are back now near midfield. They started this drive inside the 35 yard line of themselves. They got to the Patriot 40 yard line of penalty. They had a pass inside the 40. That's as far as they've gotten so far on this drive. They are now back. At the Patriot 46 yard line. Third down in a minivan here coming up for the Crusaders. Down 6 nothing here early on the first quarter. And you're watching Biggie's football here in the NBN. I'm Steven Erd. We're here at Joseph F. Fosina Field here in New Rochelle, New York. Third down in a minivan for the Crusaders. And a flag. Full start coming up. So third down in a SUV coming up for the Crusaders. I'm sorry, folks. Try to keep you as entertained as I can here at Biggie's Football and NBN. This is only the second game we've done. This is our final regular season game. We will be doing at least one semifinal for the Big East Football. And of course, we will be bringing you the Big East Football Championship the weekend of June 8th before we head to our NEFL summer season here on NBN. Starting June 15th, we will be in Wayland, Massachusetts as the Mass Warriors host the Worcester Wildcats. The return of quarterback Zeke Santiago taking a year off after leading the Warriors to a single-A championship in the NFL in 2022. 
The Warriors get back to Paydirt in 2024. We'll find out. June 15th on ADVN. Third down and an SUV here for the Crusaders, though. Down 6 nothing early. McCray going to roll out to his left. To his right, excuse me. Throws off his back foot. What a catch there. Oh, my goodness. Pass is caught. It looks like number 88. Let's see if we have a number name there. Well, that's going to be. Let's see if they give him the first down. I don't believe he had nearly enough for the first down, however. That is Aiden Edwards coming up with the grab there, but I believe it's going to be fourth down. And it is. Let's see, fourth down. We're going to have to zoom in here a little bit more. We got everybody out there. Oh, it is fourth down, and the Crusaders are going for it here. They don't want to. They don't want to give the Patriots offense the ball back when they already have a lead. So they're going to try and get themselves something here. Ball is at the 31-yard line. So it'll be fourth down about. So let's say six. Fourth and about six here for the Crusaders. Down six, nothing. Not looking to get the Patriots the ball back with the lead. McCray rolling out to his right again. Pops throws up top and incomplete. And so the Patriots defense makes the stop. They'll get the ball back to their offense with the lead. Six nothing Patriots. We'll be right back. You're watching Big East Football and NDBN. Patriots with the ball back on offense. First down. Journey again. Pressure. He's going to roll out. And he's going to take off. And on what choice? He had a lot of pressure on him. He's going to run around about the 37 yard line. With the pressure coming on him, Jernigan, who again scored a ready touching touchdown, and now, now we have a timeout by the Crusaders, it looks like. So we'll take it with them right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. Six to nothing, Patriots after the timeout. Jernigan, plenty of time here. Now pressure coming. He's going to run. Flag is down. This one's coming back regardless. Very good fumble football. Another flag comes out, I believe. Patriots are on top of the football. But there is a flag now. There's going to be a hold here against the Patriots. That was a close call there. Jernigan let the ball go as he was scrambling. He lost it there. One of the linemen was able to jump on top of it. But again, we're going to get a flag here. A hold call against the Patriots. Back above 10 yards. So a lucky break there, though. If that flag, I mean, if the Crusaders recovered that fumble, they get the football back on offense down 6 nothing here. And we could have had a game here, but now the Patriots will keep maintain possession here. But a chance to go up two scores here. Here in the first quarter, you're watching Big East Football and NBN. Everybody, I'm Stephen Err. We're here at Joseph F. Fosita Field here in New Rochelle, New York. About 23 minutes away from the Bronx. And I only know that because it looked up a blimpy. <laughs> like, I kid you not, folks. If you know, if you know blimpy, I mean, you know, you know. And I was like, wait, is there a blimpy in the, in the, in the metropolitan area? And the nearest Blimpley is 23 minutes away from where I stand right now here in the booth. In the Bronx, where the Patriots used to play. Of course, I'm not traveling 23 minutes for a Blimpy. I'll wait till another time for another time when I go to Manhattan or something to go get Blimpy. <laughs> Second down long up to the penalty. Jernigan, pumps, pressure, come from behind, up top, has a man, it is incomplete. Kadeem Wilson was, the, was there, but there were several... Crusader defenders in the vicinity as well. And I don't want to say he was lucky he wasn't picked off, but uh, he kind of loves lucky there. He wasn't almost picked off. It was also lucky if you saw there before we got, we pointed our camera toward Kadeem Wilson, who was the only receiver in the vicinity. And had a chance at the ball. There was pressure coming from right behind Jernigan, so he kind of taken a big hit there as well. Taking a sack, maybe lost the football. Who knows what could have happened there. But he obviously, credit to the old line, they were able to keep the Line, the defensive lineman away. So third down and long here for the Patriots. Last time we saw them have a third down, they scored a touchdown. Let's see what they do here. Third down and long for the Patriots. Ball back at about the 27. Just now goes over his head, and Jernigan's going to chase after and fall on it. Ball is still out, and now they blow the whistle. And a little after the play there, no flags. So that's going to be a punt here for the Patriots. We saw them punt once last time. We saw them against the main Norseman. That was late in the game. Now we're going to see them here punt here in the first quarter. Fierce Sanders defense making a stop here. 
Of course, the snap going way over the head of Journey in here on fourth down and forever. And now the marker actually reads third down. I'll show you here if you can see it. Three. So it's actually third down here. I thought it was third down before. Looks like we third down and uh, forever here. Third down, I'll say third down a mile here. The ball is back at about the 10 yard line. So Crusaders have a long way to go here if they want to get out from behind, out from deep in their own territory here. Jernigan, flag is out, throws, passes, caught by Montgomery. Tajon Montgomery is going nowhere. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. The flag is out. This one's going to be against the Patriots, I believe. And now we're going to see a pun here from the Patriots for the first time here today. Wait for the call here. We did see that pink flag come up for the second time again. I've never seen a pink flag in my five years of play-by-play, -play, folks. So I'm not exactly sure where the pink flag is about, what it's coming from, what's going on. And uh, Marker again reached third down. So it looks like there's actually a flag against the Crusaders. Maybe that's why they let the play run there. An offside or something against the Crusaders. So it's third down and forever here again for the Patriots. They're about the 15. Jernigan, high snap. Pumps going up top. Wilson is there. It's knocked away. What a play by number 29. That is theirs. Augustin again. Augustin with two big plays on two drives here for the Crusader defense. One in the end zone on the first drive before the Patriots scored the touchdown. One there. Well, if Wilson caught that pass, he's gone. That's another touchdown for the Patriots. And so now we finally see that punt I've been talking about here from the Patriots. But again, Byron Augustin making some plays here. Excuse me, Brian Augustin making some plays here for the Crusader defense. And so the Patriots will punt here. They still lead 6-0 here in the first quarter. We're here again in New Rochelle, New York. About 20 minutes away from the Bronx. Low snap. Short punt here, but it's going to take a Patriot bounce. And the Crusaders are going to take it. Number five is going to take it from the 45-yard line. Now he's going back into his own territory. Needs to get away from these Patriots. And doesn't it, he's able to get to about the 44-yard line, but that's it. Let's see if we have a number five here listed for our roster here for the, for the Crusaders. Pink flag's out again, folks. What's <laughs> over the pink flag? Again, I'm not exactly sure what this is. All this is. Not as extra sure. It might be at the end of the first quarter here, too, folks. Okay, Chris here's the offense coming out. They're looking to go the same way they've been going the whole time here. From right to left. There's a flag if I see the P. See right there, folks. Pink flag coming out. Now we'll be picked up. Well, let's see where they place the football here. Oh, there's the fire truck, folks. Hope we don't get kicked off YouTube for that one. And keep backing up. Let's see the Patriot Crusaders. Going even more backwards. And the ball is now officially at the 38-yard line. So big loss there. Still here in the first quarter. 6-0 Patriots lead the New York Crusaders. You're watching Biggie's Football on NBN. I'm Steven Err. Crusaders getting the ball back after Brian Augustin making a great play there on a third down. Knocking the ball away for Kadee Wilson, who was he was gone his way to a touchdown if he made that catch. Let's be real, folks. So McCray coming back out here for the Crusaders. First down. Pitch out here. There's Combs again. He's going backwards, and he's wrapped up. A loss of 10 on the play. And there is number again number 27. I don't believe we have a number. But I'll actually be Skinner again. Get you a name here in a minute. Some folks just is the one Skinner. Who is also having himself quite the game here to start this one. It'll be second down and 20 back at the 25-yard line. So the, the Crusaders 
Their defense stepping up here in quite a big way here. Our offense hasn't been able to get anything going just yet. They did get into New York Patriots territory by way of penalty on the last drive. But that is pretty much it. They haven't gone much since. And now a loss of 10 there on the run by Combs. Taken again down again by Dewan Skinner, who has two tackles for a loss in this game thus far. They're just going to be second down at 20. Sure, it's looking like we're in a little bit of a hurry here. We might be here and heading to the end of the quarter here. And McCray throwing out throws off his back foot. Tipped. Almost intercepted. That was a great play there. It would have been SC top 10 play there if he made the play. Let's see, that's number 10. We get you a number here in a moment. Got a roster everywhere or nowhere. All over the place here, folks. Yeah, number 10 here. And look what we do. Oh, number 10 again. Come on, big. Well, it would have been an incredible interception there for the Patriots. The we'll score on defense, by the way, in that last game against the main Norseman that we saw. First score of the game, second play from scrimmage. Norseman had the football. And a pass to Dale Lord was fumbled, picked up by Sapp. Returned all the way for a Patriot touchdown on second play from scrimmage. Patriots scored about the fourth play from scrimmage on offense here today. And now it is third down and 20. About third round 19, ball 26. McCray rolling out. Pressure, throws off his back foot. This one is incomplete. It looks like Parker is number five here for the Crusaders. Again, roster everywhere, nowhere. Now number five, let's hit on our roster for, for the Crusaders. So it looks like we're going to see a pun here. Again, it's a very long first quarter, folks. We're about 26 minutes of real time. I'm not exactly sure why we haven't had the end of the first quarter yet. It's going to be fourth down here for the Crusaders. And they'll punt for the first time today. Went for a fourth down on the first drive. We were able to convert. And so we'll see them punt here. Get the page with the ball back. Got a 6 nothing lead. We'll show you here. Kadeem Wilson back deep. The Crusaders. Nice kick here. Wilson takes it midfield. Ball the football. Ball popped out, but the Patriots get it back. That's the second turnover by the Patriots here in this first quarter. Both recovered by the Patriots, luckily. I will have a little trouble here holding on to the ball. We'll stick here with you as the Patriots offense come back out. So wait for the end of the first quarter here. They're gonna keep the keep it going here. Patriots again will be going from left to right. One for two on touchdown drives here today thus far. Score on the first drive as Jernigan found Akeem Wright. Malik Wright, excuse me. Got the guys mixed up here for the summer summer ball. 22-yard touchdown, make it 6-0. They failed on the two-point conversion. First down at midfield here for the Patriots. We'll zoom in. Somebody here, the ice cream truck is here. First down, Patriots at midfield. Jernigan, snap goes over his head again. Ramsey can't get to it, and Jernigan falls on top of it. Ball back at the 31-yard line. That is a loss of 19 yards. And once again, the Patriots going backwards for the second consecutive drive here. A couple of mishandled snaps there. And it's going to be second down to 29. Still no sign about the end of the first quarter here. And there it is. And the one. The New York Patriots lead the New York Crusaders 6 to nothing. We'll be right back. You're watching Big East football right here on NBN. Start of the second quarter, everybody. The New York Patriots lead the New York Crusaders 6 to nothing in a game that's being called Nobles of the Smoke Bowl. Jernigan over the middle. Pass is caught by Montgomery inside. Crusader territory to the 48. And after a loss of 19 
on the last play of the first quarter. Big gain there. I think it's say it's third down, so not enough for a first down for the Patriots just yet. But they do have the ball at the Crusader 48 yard line. It's going to be third down short here. Actually, the ball's actually going to be third down about eight here. They did start at midfield on this drive. So we third down and eight here for the Patriots. Journey get another high snap. Throws as he's hit and it's incomplete intended for Ramsey. And another drive stalls here for the Patriots offense. And let's see what they decide to do here. Will they go for it? Jarrett again, as you can see there on your screen, is still on the field. And it looks like the Patriots are going to go for it here on fourth down. They're not going to give the ball back to the Crusaders. The 6 0 lead. They're going to try and try something here. Fourth down and eight coming up here for the Patriots. So once again, we just found out right before the game, folks. There's a trophy for this game. Noble of the Smoke. Nobles of the Smoke Bowl 2024. Trophy presentation presented to the winner of this game. Third down and eight here for the Patriots. Jernigan. Pups. And he's going to roll out to his right. He's going to take off. He has plenty of space. Cutting to the outside. Jernigan will have a first down and more down the sideline. Inside the 30 to about the 25. And there's the versatility of the Patriots starting quarterback. He gets the first down and a lot more on a gain of 18 on a third down and eight. Actually, might be a gain of 23 there, folks. So he definitely got the first down and a lot more than that. The Patriots move the drive here on fourth down. Let the ball. Let's see if they place it. What is that about 27? So either way, it's a first down for the Patriots. They lead a 6 0 here in the second quarter. You're watching Big East Football and NABN. I'm Stephen Irwin. We are here in New Rochelle, New York. About 23 minutes outside of the Bronx. At least for that again, for that blimp piece, as I told you about, folks. But in the first quarter, not far from Manhattan. I actually found it was actually an $8 train ride from here to New York City. That's pretty good. First down, Patriots. Ball at the 27. Jernigan. Hands off, and there's Jesse Pascal busting a tackle. Finally brought down inside the 20, and he'll be the close to if he doesn't already have a Patriots first down. Jesse Pascal saw him run a few times in that game against the main horseman, including a couple two-point conversions that he successfully made. And a no huddle here for the Patriots. I can't see what the marker reads. Out of high snap, Jernigan to the end zone, wide open, Wilson, touchdown, Patriots! Kareem Wilson doing what he does best, finding the end zone. And the Patriots now lead at 12 0. They do have a Crusader down, so we'll step aside right here on NBN. And you might not be able to see it, folks. I hope you do. But that is a big loss there. There is the Sean Skinner, who's had himself quite the game here for the Crusaders. He was the man that went down on the touchdown pass from Jernigan to Kareem Wilson. So we will hope the best for him. See, so was being helped off the field. And now for the two-point conversion following the touchdown. Journey, another high snap. Throws over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Knocked away. Tanner for Wilson. So it remains 12-0 Patriots. But Marquise Jernigan has two touchdown passes here in the first half. And we'll be right back. You're watching Big East Football right here in NBN. On the other side of the football viewer, folks. We've got a full soccer game going on. New Rochelle. Parks and recreation. A lot of sports going on all at once. Very cool to see. And a squib kick here. Is that the fumble? <laughs> Paid the Crusader guy almost wasn't able to come up with it. They had to get the ball held on the tee because the wind. It's not too, too bad wind, but there's a little bit of wind here. And the ball wasn't wanting to cooperate here with the tee. So they had to have someone hold it down. And then someone said, F it, just kick the ball. And so that's what they did. And Crusaders, let's see where they serve with the football. They're down 12 0 here. The Patriots lead the Crusaders 12 0. They're watching Big East football here in NBN. I'm Stephen Err. We are here at Joseph S. Fosina Field. I'm right, saying that five times fast. I know I won't. Here in New Rochelle, New York, about 25 minutes outside of the Bronx. 
Patriots, of course, playing their, as what, you know, what we know of, is their final season here in franchise history. They will be discontinued after the end of the Big East football season here in 2024. They've been around since 2016 with one championship. And in the Big East, excuse me, the East Coast Football League Independent Conference Championship in 2019. Honor David Patterson and his wife, Melissa. Have eight championships under their belt over their careers. This will be their ninth if they win Big East football here in 2024. For now they get past the Crusaders. First down to 10, ball to 40. McCurry pitch out. Here is Combs again to the 40, to 45. And actually, look at about 46 yard line. So I got two touchdown passes here from Marquise Jernigan. One to Malik Wright. One to Kadeem Wilson. So finding his guys. Of course, Patriots do have a drive where they punted. So they are now two for three on touchdown drives in this game thus far. Crusaders 0 for 2. That's the third offensive drive. They failed on a fourth down conversion in their first drive and they punted away on their second drive. Looking to get on the board here. Toward the end of the first half. By the way, folks, stay tuned for halftime. We'll have a special interview with David Patterson asking him why he decided this is it for him. What about the Harlem Gators, the other team that he is in charge of? And what's next for him in the latter part of his life? Stay tuned for that at halftime. McCurry pitch out to Combs, and Combs' flag is down. Combs breaking away from one tackle, and he come outside. A second flag is down, and he goes out of bounds near the 35. But there are two flags down. Looks like that's good. this one's coming back, and now we have a whistle here. So let's see. And it's actually a chop block against the Patriots. So... Again, the Patriots giving a free arch here to the Crusaders. First time was on a face mask that got them into Patriot territory. This one will be a chop block. That will also get them into Patriot territory. Let's see where they place the football. Of course, we have two, 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 two flags down, folks. So, for all I know, we might have offsetting penalties here. I only saw the chop block penalty against the Patriots, but we'll see what happened. See what they call here. See number 18 there pointing to the Crusaders. And the Crusaders are actually backing up here. And now they're calling the chop block against the Crusaders. So it wasn't a call against the Patriots. It was a call against the Crusaders themselves. They'll continue to back themselves up here. They've done that a few times here in this game thus far. Of course, Patriots have as well. They have two mishandled snaps that are going way over the head of Jernigan. So both offenses going backwards. They're on the Patriots moving forward to the end zone. They've done that twice here today. They lead 12-0 over the Crusaders. Stunts the sun starting to set a little bit here. A New Rochelle, New York. And there's the whistle ready to go here for the next play. We're going to have to zoom out a little bit, just a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. Zoom in some more. And there we go. Marker reads second down here. McCree pops, chucking it down the sideline and knocked away. Incomplete, no flag. Number 10 was there in the vicinity for the Patriots. Let's get you a name. I know we have one here for him somewheres. I do believe we have number 10. It looks like we don't, actually. So once again, number 10. He had a nice play in the last year. He actually may only the interception. Remember that? He was on his, like, his knees were bent everything. He was... Had a pretzel pretty much, and he almost had an interception that would have made one of the top plays on Sports Center had he made it. So it's not sure for a number 10 anywhere here for the Patriots. Doesn't seem we have one. Third down here for the Crusaders, however, they need to convert here. They're down 12 0 now. McCree fakes up top and almost intercepted. The only guy there for the Patriots was number 25. There were no Crusader receivers in the area. So that was almost, that should have been, that was an he's very interception from 25, who again, let's see we have a name for. Trying to search both sides of our roster here, folks, for these names, and not po nothing really popping up here. Now let's see again with the Crusaders now. Again, they're all for... Over two thus far on their drives, trying to score touchdowns. And they got a punt here. They're going to be over three. Uh, they got a punt here. 
Back to the Patriots, and once again, with our camera, there is Kadeem Wilson back deep for the Patriots. He almost lost it on the last one. He fumbled, almost fumbled it away, but luckily the Patriots really get it back at midfield. So 12 0 Patriots here toward the end of the half. And stay tuned, folks. We'll have a halftime interview with David Patterson coming up from inside the broadcast booth. And a low snap here. Let's see if he can get it off. He's not going to be able to. And he's going to run. The big man is not going to be over there. There's Burns, who made the opening kickoff. Going absolutely nowhere. Brought down by number seven. There's Montgomery. Making big plays all day long here for the Patriots. And their offense comes back out. Up 12-0. When we come back, you're watching Big East Football right here on NBN. Patriots with the lead and the ball. 12-0 here in the second quarter. And the Nobles of the Smoke Bowl 2024. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. I'm Stephen Err. We're here in New Rochelle, New York for this one. Patriots have the ball first down at the 30-yard line of the Crusaders. Excellent start for the position for this one. Jernigan and off to the big man. There's the 26. We saw a lot of him in that game against the main Norseman. That is Tyreek Mines. Short gain there. Well, again, stay two folks. We'll ask David Patterson why he's decided this is it for him as an owner of the New York Patriots. If this is truly it, for the New York Patriots. What's next for the Harlem Gators? Team that last year played in the League of All, League of All the Leagues Alliance, the LAL. Fell short of the championship game last year. Of course, the Jersey Sharks went out and defeated the Brooklyn Seminoles in a blowout fashion. That was kind of surprising. Kind of reminded me of Super Bowl 48. I remember watching that game. I thought, how are the Noles? The Brooklyn Seminoles are one of the most talented teams on all of semi football, at least here in the Northeast. How do they get blown out by the Jersey? The Jersey Sharks are a talented team, too. But the Noles should have been in that game all, th all throughout the game. Jernigan going up top. Has a man. It is incomplete. Just out of the reach of Wright, who would have had his second touchdown of the night. A almost perfect pass there by Jernigan. Could not get it off. Third down coming up for the Patriots. So again, Harlem Gators came short of the LAL Championship which is a combination of many different leagues, including MLF. Got teams like the Jersey Sharks, the Brooklyn Seminoles, Tri-County Owls, I believe, are in there. They won the IFA Championship in 2021. IFL Championship 2021, the Impact Football League. Third down. Jernigan. That smacked away. Double, double zero. Wow. Jernigan was looking for the bomb to the end zone and at the last second, another double zero, smacking that one away. And so it will be fourth down. And I didn't see, but I'm not sure Jernigan got his hand smacked as well as the ball, but he seems to be all right. Looks like he's okay. Watches a lot of New York Rangers hockey, by the way. Shout out to the Rangers. Currently in the NHL playoffs. Boston and New York fans, of course, hoping that the Bruins win their series over the Panthers so they can face the Rangers in the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> Let's see what happens there. Patriots going for it on fourth down. Jernigan. Pressure over the middle. Tipped and incomplete. Knocked away by number 49. Do we have a name for the big man? I don't think we do. Let's check our paper here in a moment, folks. Again, Crusade is making another stop. Their offense comes out down 12 nothing. When we come back, you're watching Big East Football right here in NEBN. Patriots still lead 12 nothing, with the Crusaders defense making the stop there on the last play, which might have been number 48 linebacker Cornell Pennington making the deflection on fourth down. And now the snap went way over the head of McCree. Better watch out. It goes into the end zone. McCree needs to get rid of it. Throws. It's incomplete. The ball's in the end zone, actually. And they're going to say it's a touchdown for the Patriots. What a sequence of events there. Ball picked up in the end zone by number 11 here for the Patriots. Refs calling it a touchdown. And it is now 18-0 Patriots. So right after the Patriots offense gets the ball away on a fourth down. Patriots defense come up with a big stop there. And that's Keon Barron who had a nice game against the Norsemen a couple weeks ago, recovering the, the fumble in the end zone. And now you hear the drum line. 
I think we'll see them at halftime. So I uh, might hear them during our halftime show, folks. Stay tuned and find out. But again, there's Baron. You see him on there next to the soccer net. Celebrate with the, celebrate with the teammates. Patriots now lead 18 to nothing. Here toward the end of the half. And once again, they get over two here. They are over two thus far on two point conversions, trying to make it a 20 to nothing game here. And there, Montgomery, you see there, it was for a second there all alone. Nobody covered him. Number 14 goes over to cover him. Two point conversion. Jerry in hands off. Number four into the end zone. The two point conversion attempt. It's good. And now the Patriots come to get on the board with a two-point conversion. They lead it 20 to nothing. Joshua Hines with the two-point conversion. We'll be right back. You're watching Biggie's football right here in NBN. For a second there, folks, you saw number four right there. Back of quarterback Josh Vasquez who stepped into the game last time we saw the Patriots against the Norseman. He was going to go out there for kickoff. And he has now since gone back onto the sideline. There's no way they send back for kickoff. 18 nothing Patriots lead the Crusaders. You're watching Biggie's Football on NBN. I'm Steven Err here in Richard Rochelle, New York. Crusaders coming out here. And now going backwards once again. We've seen a lot of this from both sides. And out of bounds near the 25. What a big hit! And now a flag comes out. We're waiting for it for a moment. There. We're going to zoom in. You might see the flag there. Give me a little more. You could say, let's see. Yeah, there it is. Bam, right there. There's the flag. Losing back out. So there's going to be a late hit, I believe, against the Patriots on the kickoff. Let's see. I don't know. Again, we don't know how much time we have left here in the first half, but we do know that we have a halftime interview coming up with Patriots owner head coach. Patriots owner David Patterson. Excuse me. Losing my words here. So be stay tuned for that one. It's a very special interview coming up. And then Craig's off to come back out. Last time we saw him, we had one play. And again, she saw that crazy fumble. Went over the head of everybody. They wound up in the end zone recovered. By the Patriots for a touchdown, and that'll lead it. After their first successful two-point conversion, they lead it eight twenty to nothing over the Crusaders. They can finish their regular season's perfect six and zero as they head to the postseason, which begins on June first. Patriots will nonetheless host the playoff game, whether they win today or what have you. They'll be the second place team by barring any catastrophic meltdown here the rest of the season. Because they do hold the tiebreaker over the Empire State Wolfpack, who are currently in second place. They beat them 6 0 back in week number two. As again, Jernigan found Malik Wright for the lone touchdown of that game. That video is available in the Big East Football Group on Facebook. So if you're not there, get there. Now we'll zoom in as we get ready for this next drive for the Crusaders, who look to bounce back after, I mean, I don't even know what they what do you call that. It was horrendous, I guess you would say. Not the greatest play. For the Crusaders on the last one. One play, and the Patriots scored a touchdown. So let's see where they put the football. It looks like they actually called a penalty here against the Crusaders. I'm not sure why. There was a late hit against the Patriots I saw from the kickoff. But the ball is back at about the 15-yard line here. So it was a 10-yard penalty somewhere against the Crusaders. We're tail 20 or nothing. We're zoom out just a little bit. Make sure everybody can see everything. And McCray is going to take off. Has plenty of room to the outside. Get to about the 16-yard line. Nothing more there. So again, Crusaders had a big game last week against those Empire State Wolfpack. If they had defeated the Wolfpack last week, they would have taken over second place in the Big East football standings. And would have been in the driver's seat to host the playoff game come June 1st. Unfortunately, they fell to the Empire State Wolfpack 18 to nothing. And now currently sit third place, right ahead of the Brooklyn Bengals and the Staten Island Hurricanes. May Norseman have officially been eliminated from playoff contention. And of course, if you don't know already, the Westchester Steelers have folded after not scoring a single point this year. They'll finish 0 6. Hope to see them back again in 2025, however. So, second down here for the Crusaders. After that run there by McCray. And he's going to take off again. Pressure, though, and he's going to be wrapped up and go absolutely nowhere. And a whistle blows. The blow played dead there. Whistle blow a few times, so I'm not sure if they're calling the end of the half or what's going on here, but we're going to find out here momentarily. 
I know it's not the end of the half yet, folks, but we're getting very close, I'm sure of that. Stay tuned for our halftime show and then a special interview with David Patterson, owner of the New York Patriots, coming up at halftime. Right now, the Patriots lead the Crusaders 20 to nothing. Looking to finish the season undefeated at 6 0 and host a playoff game June 1st. Many people have been asking Commissioner Mason Morgan about the playoff scenario, who will host, when it will be host, and as soon as that information becomes available, we'll let you know. And a timeout by the, by the Crusaders, their second of the half. Take it with them right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. After the timeout, Crusaders have the football. Can't see the marker. There's McCray. Pitt as he throws. The pass is intercepted. Picked off and all the way for the touchdown. For the Patriots, flags all over the field. The second defensive touchdown of the night here for the New York Patriots. For the New York Patriots. The question is, will it stand? If it does, the Patriots currently lead 27, 26 to nothing. Intercepted by number 25, who we do not have a name for. But I don't think it's going to count. No official word yet. But here comes, looks like the Patriots offense coming back out here. I'm not sure if the interception counts or what. You hear the drum line once again, folks. The drum line getting ready for a halftime show. And it looks like the interception does count, but they're not a touchdown for the Patriots, however. I think a, I think a uh, penalty here against the Patriots. Took away the touchdown, did not take away the interception, however. Now, Kadeem Wilson and Christian Rams will be told by the Toller OC. Let's go. We're now Wilson back on the sideline, so let's come out for this play. Patriots do have the ball on offense. They're at the 15 yard line after the interception. So, no touchdown, but they do get the interception there. Let's see if they can extend on this 20 0 lead they now have. Joshua Hines in the backfield. And a p end around here. It's number 80. That is John Borgia. We don't hear much. We haven't heard from him yet this season. Take the end around and get a few there. So, again, number 25 at the interception. We do, have a no do not have a name for him. We have a, we have a 25 for the Crusaders. That is Joshua Fowler, but a uh, different team here. Look for the 25 for the Patriots. We do not have, unfortunately. Again, you hear the drum line, folks. They're getting ready for their halftime show. Coming up here, the Patriots looking to end the half with a, another score and expand on their lead. They're currently at 20 or nothing here. That'll be second down here for the Patriots. Jern again. Flag is down. Throws knocked away again. Another knockdown here by the Crusader defense. But a flag is down. I believe this might be against the Crusaders. Maybe an offside here. Let's wait and see. They just lead Crusaders 20 to nothing here. we the end of the half. All right, back to the action here, folks. Patriots still the Crusaders 20 or nothing as Jernigan is going to take off and try to get to the outside. Breaking a couple tackles. Finally wrapped up at about the 10. Patriots call a timeout. Take like another one. Right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. Out of timeout. It's actually going to be fourth down here for the Patriots. Look at the score before the end of the half here. And this might be with the last play of the half. We'll find out. Fourth down and goal from the 10-yard line. Jernigan. 
Rolling out to his left. And throws away, incomplete. And so once again, the Patriots fail on a fourth down. Crusaders defense makes the stop. And that's the end of the half, folks. New York Patriots lead the New York Crusaders 20 to nothing. We're back for our halftime show and our interview with David Patterson right after this. You're watching a presentation. You're watching Biggest Football on ADBN, actually. And we're walking back inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Stephen Erd, the New York Patriots currently. The New York Crusaders 20 to nothing. Marquise Jernigan having two touchdown passes, one going to Kadeem Wilson, one going to Malik Wright. Meanwhile, the defense is set up big time. They have a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. And they almost had a pick six, but a penalty called it back. At the end of the half, and the Patriots weren't able to convert that interception for another touchdown. They still lead the Patriot, the Crusaders, excuse me, 20 to nothing. And now, our special presentation here at the New England Broadcast Network, an interview with New York Patriots head owner, David Patterson. All right, hi everybody, welcome back. We are here at halftime between the game and the game between the New York Patriots and the New York Crusaders. And we are now joined by Patriots owner, David Patterson, who has announced that the Patriots will be shut down following the season. Now, coach, what is the reason... Hey, what made you come to the decision that this will be the final season for the New York Patriots? Uh, well, here's the thing. is the final season for David Patterson. Uh, we did go into a search about if there is somebody that is uh, equipped and willing to take over the program and take it into the 10th year of the program. So although the New York Patriots are synonymous oftentimes with me, whether it be for better or for worse, um, the program has been built over the last nine years with a lot of people. Um, You'll see some of them today. Goya is somebody who I can't possibly stop the program without making sure she signs off on it. Dave Collier, our head coach, uh, some of our assistant coaches like Lester, Twan, and uh, Xavier Karp, who went from the field onto the sidelines this year to be defensive coordinator uh, in order to help us out this year. So, And, of course, Coach Black, who's a, our second in charge of operations. Uh, we have so many people here that – uh, although I'm 150% sure that you will not see David Patterson uh, roaming sidelines uh, in uh, next year or what have you and moving forward, uh, the New York Patriots, again, will give you guys updates on exactly, uh, if anything, what they're doing. But I think everybody's like assuming, eh, Patterson's not involved, there can't be a Patriots, but uh, they kind of don't know the story of the team. So what would it mean for you in your final season to bring a championship here to the Patriots? Well, man, it's been 19 years that I've been doing this. Uh, this would be the eighth championship of my career. Um, the Patriots, this would be the second championship. But we, we can't really talk about that until we finish this game right here, first and foremost. So above all else, we haven't been talking championship talk. We've been talking about no regrets, play-by-play, matchup-by-matchup, week-by-week, and just being 1-0 and every week. Um, we have a saying that we've been using for years. Uh, we, we hit the, the eight ball the same way as the previous seven. Uh, if you're a billiards player and you end up trying to do something different when you hit the eight ball, you end up scratching, hitting in the wrong pocket or what have you. So championship football is just the same. We get past this one, finish out today, and then we head into elimination football. So, you know, I don't get into the stories except for 1-0 and each week. So you're not just the owner of the New York Patriots. You're also the owner of a summer team, the Harlem Gators, or is it the New York Gators? Uh, the New York Gators. Uh... It goes by either Harlem Gators or New York Gators. I'm actually the director of operations for that. The owner, um, Roz, she is the, um, the owner of it. Coach D, before he passed away, was the co-owner of that particular product. And in his memory, I carried it on in terms of the legacy uh, for year 19 and last year for year 20. So it was very important to me as he was a very, very dear friend of mine. And uh, not only did he play on one of my teams, he was one of my players. Uh, we coached together. Uh, we owned products together and, you know, went, went through this whole crazy thing called semi-pro for so many years that I had to make sure that the Gators product reached year 20, which we accomplished that last year. Came up a little short of the championship, but we did some great things. So this is your final year in semi-pro. What's next for David Patterson? Oh, a lot of golf. Uh, <laughs> the kids, and, and that's the thing about it, is like a, a lot of people don't understand what it, it takes to, to own one of these things. Um, players and coaches alike 
uh, if they have a family issue or something going on or what have you, they can kind of step away from it, call time out because nobody's making money in this thing. It's not paying anybody's bills or what have you. But when you're the person that literally the, it goes with what you do uh, for 19 years, you know, my wife, happy Mother's Day um, to everybody out there. She's a very patient woman and, and has sacrificed so much uh, over the past 19 years. Uh, our family vacations included football, uh, guys in terms of the barbecuing and coming over to the house and even like the Bleasy show that comes to the house every Thursday so they can have a, a spot to, do, to, to show their talents and to, to do their thing. Uh, that, that's what it's really about. But above all else, you'll, you'll see me around. I definitely want to support other people's products and support people that are really doing great things like the New York Crusaders. Taiwan runs an amazing program, absolute awesome program. And so that we have a good day of passion to get back down to the field. We're ready for the second half, so I want to thank you, Coach, for coming on and joining us here for this halftime show. And as David mentioned, it might not be the end of the New York Patriots after all, as we've heard already, but it is the end. This is the final season for owner David Patterson. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate you, and thank you for coming out. Appreciate the support. Love all the people that do the media, the video, all of our photographers, all of our support staff. Uh, th th those are the people that make this thing go around. And again, they do it for the love of the game. If we had to pay salaries like they're worth, we definitely would not even be able to get one game off the ground, let alone a few seasons or 19 of them. Well, thank you, Dave. Congratulations on a successful career. Appreciate you. Second half coming up right now. So the second half, everybody. The New York Patriots lead the New York Crusaders 20 to nothing. Crusaders got the ball to start the second half as they deferred at the coin toss. And I'll zoom in here in a moment. There we go. I'll zoom in. And again, you are watching the biggest football on NBN, everybody. I'm Steven Err. We talked about it at halftime. Marquise Jernigan has two touchdown passes in this game. One to Malik Ray. I keep wanting to say Akeem Murray because it was one of the guys who was looking during the A7FL to the New England area. Either Boston, Massachusetts, Providence, Rhode Island, or Worcester, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, they never came to fruition for the league's 10th season. And once again, I want to thank David Patterson, owner of the New York Patriots, for joining us here at halftime. He talked to us about how it might not be actually be the final season of the Patriots season. Might not be the final Patriots season ever. They are still looking at seeing if there's any potential suitors to take over the Patriots in his place, but it is the final season for him. As an owner here, again, he has eight championships under his belt. This will be his second with the Patriots if they win Big East football here in 2024. First, they got to get through the Crusaders, so they currently lead 20 to nothing here at the start of the for second half. Crusaders starting with the ball at midfield. See, you might, might see it on your screen. The ball is just about inside Patriot territory. At the end of the first half, the Patriots done a real great job there. And we have a timeout to start the second half, so we'll take it with them right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. So the Crusaders taking their first time out here with the minute and a half into the first half, the second half, excuse me. Oh, uh, that didn't last long. Now 20 0 here against the New York Patriots. The Nobles of the Smoke Bowl here in 2024. There's actually a trophy here for this game. We got your presentation for you at the end of it. First down, start of the second half here and off to Combs. And Combs gets to. Oh, the ball is out, but the Patriots, looks like the Crusaders got back on top of it. And they'll say that Combs was actually down there, so he got nothing there. Might have lost. He lost half a yard, maybe an inch or a hair. He lost something there. It uh, looked like, folks, he did not lose the football. And even if he did, number 33 was able to pick it up there for the Crusaders, so. No farm, no foul there for the Crusaders. And they'll have the ball back here again. And right around the same spot. At midfield as they start again. The second half. Started at the end of that first half, the Patriots defense was strong. They had the fumble recovery in the end zone for the touchdown. And then the interception by number 25, as you see here in the in the secondary. All around your screen. Had the interception and the handoff here to Combs. And Combs is going nowhere again. Might have gotten a yard. Oh, little... Something ongoing here with Jernigan and a couple guys here in the crowd. Wanted to be showing you that though, folks. Keep it professional here. Keep what's on the field. It's third down here for the Crusaders. They're already trailing 20 to nothing here against the Patriots. Patriots looking to finish their season with an undefeated 6-0 record. 
Giving up just 16 points all season long. Eight points to the main Norse in week four. Eight points to the Brooklyn Bengals last week. Both road wins for the Patriots. They have given up zero points here at home this season. Looking to keep that up here. They're already at 20 nothing over the New York Crusaders. See what the Crusaders can do here. Here it's third down at 10 at midfield. Maybe third and 11. But it's third and long nonetheless. And McCray actually looks like a new quarterback is under center here for the Crusaders. I'll have to get that in here in a moment as my papers are blown away here. Looks like actually be Bannerman. And it's again, nothing going there. And it does look like it is Bannerman, Juanique Bannerman. And a quarterback here for the Crusaders. He tell you, he looks like he, I didn't see what happened there, but he got nowhere. And they're back to where they are once again. Nice see couple guys here coming out for the Patriots. Squad's going back in. Marker is now reached fourth down. So there he goes. So for a second, I read third down. We just saw a third down. So we fourth down to 10 here. And on the last three plays, the Crusaders have gotten absolutely nothing. Might have actually lost a, f a few inches. And down 20 nothing. There's not really much of a choice here. You have to go for it here on fourth down. And that's exactly what the Crusaders are going to do. And have a whistle. Time out by the Patriots. So we'll take it with them. Fourth down coming up when we come back right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Fourth down and 10 for the Crusaders. Down 20 to nothing. And Mary loses the football. So neither way, defense for the Patriots stepping up for a third consecutive time. And they'll give the ball back to their offense. So we'll take another break. We'll be right back. A lot of breaks here. Start the second half. You're watching Big East football here on NABN. And for the night, we say goodbye to the drum line. And thank them for their services. As they now trot out the field here in New Rochelle. And our first down here for the Patriots. Jernigan still in a quarterback. You can see who he was handing off to, but it didn't look like he had much on that one. So the Patriots already up 20 0 here in the third quarter with the football and the obviously getting the lead. Looking to Stand on this lead here on this next first drive here of the second half. Well, back at the 47, Jaren again throws short pass caught by Wilson. Wilson, he had to break away from the 29, was not able to against the midfield. And there's Augustin again, who's having himself quite a game here for the Crusaders. A couple pass deflections and now that wide open tackle. He was the only guy there that was really going to be able to stop Wilson and he got exactly what he did. So it will be third down here and for the Patriots so on this first half of the second half, already up 20 0. Look at the finish of the season, regular season, 6 0, undefeated. Number one seed in the Big, e, in Big East football. And will host the playoff game on June 1st. A lot on the line here for the Patriots, really. Heading into the postseason, third down though here from midfield. There's Montgomery motion. Jernigan throws short. Uh, pass is knocked away. Incomplete intended for Montgomery. And number 14 was there to break the one, that one up. Let's see if we have number 14. We do not. It doesn't look like for Crusaders. And so now fourth down, and both teams have struggled here thus far. Of course, it's only first drive of the second half for both teams. Not the team's got anything going. <laughs> I mean... Well, the Crusaders barely got a yard if they got any, unless they got negative. Might have got a negative few inches there on that first drive. Patriots not getting much here either. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down, up 20 or nothing. Going to try and expand on this lead. Put this game away as fast as they possibly can here in the third. So it'll be fourth down for the Patriots. Jernigan. And he's going to roll out to his left. He has room. Jernigan cut back inside. And I don't believe he's going to have the first down, but let's see what the ref says. And we got a man down for the Patriots. So we're going to take a break right here on NBN. And this could very well be the worst possible news here for the Patriots. As Jernigan is having to be helped off the field here by a couple of his teammates. So when the Patriots come back out on offense, you see he might be able to see the face. 
Marquise Jernigan, he is in some type of pain here. As he sits down in a blue chair. We're going to see Josh Vasquez come on offense for the Patriots on their next drive. So the Patriots did not convert on that fourth down. Crusaders take over, down by 20. Brennan in a quarterback, and he'll hand off here to Combs, who gets nowhere to the 42-yard line. So, again, Marquise Jernigan getting injured on that fourth down play. Hoping for the best, especially if you're a Patriots fan. You don't want to see anything like that happening. Your starting quarterback going down. That's throwing two touchdowns here in this game. Would be a big loss for him heading into the postseason. Of course, this is the final game of the Patriots. I do believe the Patriots regular season. It's definitely the final regular season home game. If it's not the final regular season game in general. And you see here, there's number four, Josh Vasquez, who stepped in in the April 20th game against the main Norseman, as well as Tajay Montgomery. Tajay Montgomery, who might, who's actually throwing some, getting some reps in the quarterback as well. We get back to the action here. Second down for the Crusaders, and the ball's out, and the Patriots have it. And so we're going to see Vasquez earlier than we thought. Another turnover here for the Crusader offense. Number eight. Again, we have a name here for number eight for the Patriots. <laughs> he was laying on the ground and a happy Mother's Day pose. Actually, we do. As that is Isaiah Williams. I do apologize, folks. Let's just confirm I have that name right. It is Isaiah Williams covering the fumble. Patriots off to coming back out. Now let's see. But it should be Josh Vasquez out there leading the way for the Patriots offense. We'll see. There he goes, Montgomery out in the huddle. So it's possible that Montgomery might be out there at quarterback here for the Patriots, which would be very interesting. He's listed as a running back. We've seen him take just about all of his reps for running back here for the Patriots. So if he's in a quarterback, sight to see for sure. Let's see. And lo and behold, it is Tajay Montgomery. Oh, actually, hold on a second. No, it is Tajay Montgomery in quarterback, folks. So this is a sight to see here. Joshua Vasquez on the sideline. Off camera. And a handoff here. Number four. <laughs> Joshua Hines. And you hear, guy, hear guys talking about extra gravy here from the crowd. Because uh, Joshua, Joshua Hines is one of the big guys here for the Patriots. How about the Western Mass... Western Mass What's the Maryland Warriors, by the way, folks, in indoor football? They're getting talked about by big leagues. Big guys on X and Twitter, or whatever you call it. One of their linemen looks kind of like Hines here, if you could see him on camera. Number four is about the same size. It's just immaculate. Immaculate man out there on the field. And one of the Western Maryland Warriors indoor football defensive linemen, about the same size. And guys were like, wow, this guy's an amazing, enormous guy. Montgomery hands off. There is Hines again. And Hines diving to the 30-yard line. What a run there. Joshua Hines, the big man, getting past all these Crusader defenders, getting the first down for the Patriots. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Now, what they say, folks, size does not matter. And it certainly didn't matter there as Joshua Hines gets the first down for the Patriots. They currently 20 to nothing. We're here in the third quarter of this game. You're watching Big East Football on NABN. I'm Stephen Err. We're here in New Rochelle, New York. So officially first down for the Patriots at the 30-yard line. Already got 20 to nothing. Montgomery going up top. Has his man. It's intercepted. Pass is picked off by number five for the Crusaders. Still going to the 20. And finally rocked at the 24 by Montgomery. Let's see if we have a name for number five here for the Crusaders. We have a lot of names here for the Crusaders. We thought we would. We don't. So the Crusaders' defense makes another stop there. And we'll be right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. So, oh, folks, we're being told that is the end of the third quarter. New York Patriots lead New York Crusaders 20 or nothing. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter coming up right here on the New England Broadcast Network. 
Start of the fourth and final quarter, everybody. The New York Patriots and the New York Crusaders 20 to nothing. You're watching Big East Football in NBN. I'm Stephen Irv. We're here in New York, New York. High snap here for Brenham. And now he's going to take off and get not much there. So the Patriots switching quarterbacks as again Marquise Jernigan might be done for the day. He's suffering a knee injury on the last play of the Patriots' last offensive drive. Oh, the, the second to last play the Patriots' offensive drive. He tried to run on a fourth down and Injured himself. His night's probably over. And at quarterback was Taji Montgomery, who just threw an interception. So we'll see. Crusaders back on offense here, down by 20 here as we start to, again, we start the fourth quarter. Let's zoom in here just a little bit to get the best possible view we can. Our only second down here. And a high snap. Crusaders better watch out as Brandon Johnson on top of it. Well, that's the second time that the Crusaders have a a ball over the head of a quarterback as Bannerman jumps on top of that one. This one is not going to the end zone. The last time the Crusaders had that happen to them. McCray tries throwing away. Well, still up somehow being still in the end zone. Recovered by the Patriots for a touchdown. Which gave us the 18-0, the 12-0 score at that time. See, it was 18-0 when they scored the last pick six. First two scores were touchdown passes by Jernigan. Again, one went to Malik Wright. One went to Kadeem Wilson. And now the Crusaders, who have had nothing really going for them their way here tonight, face a third down in a minivan here. About the inside their own 10-yard line. Ball might, about, about the eight. Somewhere around there. Bannerman chucking it down the field. The pass is almost intercepted. And there's number 80. Almost had it there. It'll be fourth down here. Got to get for the Crusaders. And they got a punt here, which is probably the best option for them, being so deep in their own territory. Maybe Josh Burns, who had, who's been kicking for the Crusaders here, and now we have a whistle. Josh Burns has been kicking for the Crusaders here today. He'll kick again. Another punt upcoming here. So once again, last week, we talked about it earlier, the Crusaders went into Long Island with a chance to upset the Long Island, or the Empire State Wolfpack, as they're known as, but a chance to go. And Burns can't get out of his own end zone. He's going down. And let's see, they're going to call it a safety. So the Crusaders defense, once again, making a big stop here. And the score is now 22 to nothing. Just as we're talking about if the Crusaders had pulled off an upset over the Empire State Wolfpack last week, they would be second place in the Big East football standings right now. But now they're down here 22 to nothing over the Patriots. Against the Patriots. They start to wonder, are the Brooklyn, could the Brooklyn Bengals or the Staten Island Hurricanes jump the Crusaders for third place and send them into fourth or even send them home packing here in the final weeks of the regular season. 22-0 New England, uh, New York, excuse me. Patriots lead the Crusaders. Now ready for the free kick here. We're going to zoom out here for that free kick. There you go. Look at that beautiful view, by the way. Just give you a view of the beautiful field here in New Rochelle. We're here at Joseph S. Joseph F., excuse me, Fosina Field here in New Rochelle, New York. About 20, 25 minutes away from the Bronx. Very beautiful metropolitan area. And if you're wondering what the end zones say, if you don't see them, they say New Rochelle. Each end zone says New Rochelle is painted in purple. And now the free kick coming off for the Crusaders again. That's the third, I believe the third turnover here for the Patriot defense here tonight. They had six, by the way, I meant to mention this. Last week against the Brooklyn Bengals, yes, they gave up eight points. The defense recorded six turnovers. That was a big talking point in the groups. Like the Patriots defense for six turnovers in their win last week against the Bengals. And once again here, showing up, showing out. They have three turnovers here against the Crusaders here tonight. 
And again, barring a catastrophic meltdown, the Patriots will be 6-0 to end the season. Have the number one overall seed in Big East and host the playoff game on June 1st. Well, we're to the free kick here by the Crusaders. Patriots going to get the ball back. We're going to see who's going to come at a quarterback here. Will it be Tajay Montgomery, who just threw an interception on the last drive? Or will it be Josh Vasquez? And this one taken. I can't see who has it. It's a number, number one. It's not Jernigan, obviously. It's a bigger number one. He's still going to the 30-yard line. What a play there. We're going to zoom in now. It's the big man number one, who I don't have a name for because multiple, pl multiple players wanted to say number jersey, so there's that. But the Patriots offense leading 22 to nothing coming out. They'll have great field position to start this drive. Looking to extend on this lead. And I could say they're looking to put this one away, but they've already done that basically here tonight. Again, up 22 to nothing now at this point. Offense coming back out. And let's see who's in at quarterback. And it's going to be Montgomery again. Actually, it, no, never mind. You saw Vasquez coming out there. He's just throwing football to the referee. Montgomery is going to be the quarterback. Again, Marquise Jernigan going out a few drives ago, running on a fourth down and injuring his leg, having to be carried off by his teammates. Not a good sign. Hopefully for the best. Especially, again, if you're a Patriots fan, you don't want your quarterback going down like that. Especially heading into the postseason. That's when you need him the most. That's when it counts the most. So one versus four, two versus three will be the postseason, Big East football postseason, coming June 1st. Championship, June 8th or 9th on the New England Broadcast Network. We're now, for Patriots have the ball to 30, first down, a 22 to nothing. And Montgomery, he's gonna take off himself, cut to the outside, and down the sideline only gets about four or five yards on that one. So not much they're doing for the third quarterback here for the Patriots. A lot of guys undressing here tonight for the for the Patriots. Their night's done. And we're just waiting at this point to see when the rest will blow the whistle. We are at seven and a half minutes here into the fourth quarter, according to my, my clock that I have here. So it could be a little while yet till the refs call this one. We'll have to see. Again, next broadcast, June 1st, Big East Football Semifinal here on the New England Broadcast Network. We'll be out here in New York again. The only question is, where will we be? Will we be in Staten Island? Will we be in Brooklyn? Will we be back here in New Rochelle? Will we be in Long on Long Island? That's another. That's a big thing I've had to argue with my a, a friend of mine who says she was in Long Island this week. I tell her, no, you are on Long Island, not in Long Island. But anyway, stay tuned for updates. NBN on Facebook. Montgomery on first down, hands off, then coming to the outside. Flag is down, and they're going to wrap him up. Might have gone to the yard, but this one's coming back, I do believe. And then there is the ref saying, hold against the Patriots. So against the folks, NABN on Facebook, NABN14 on Twitter, slash X, and underscore E, underscore B, underscore N, underscore on Instagram. That's where you'll find the highlight to this game, as well as the game between the Patriots and the main Norseman back from back on April 20th. And you'll also find updates from where we will be June 1st for the Big East football semifinals. I'm really hoping that we, we, we kind of get a weekend doubleheader, have one game on the first, one on the second, but we will see what happens. Nonetheless, we will be bringing you the championship game June 8th slash 9th on NEBN. And so now the ball back at the 40-yard line here for the Patriots. Already up 22-0 here at the closing, hopefully the closing minutes of the fourth quarter. We're going to wrap this one up. Again, the Patriots looking to finish this regular season 6-0. David Patterson in his final season as owner of the Patriots. And what could possibly be, as he told us. And there he is. Man in white. Number 11. Well, that's, a, actually, that's a stripe, folks. But there's David Patterson. Owner of the Patriots for the last time this season. He can finish a 6 a regular season. Montgomery hands off again. And once again, the Crusader defense wrapping him up near midfield. Another huge loss there for the running game for the Patriots. Looks like it's going to be another shutout victory here for the Patriots. Unless the Crusaders get the ball back toward the end here and get into the end zone some way, somehow. We will, we will see how much time we have left here and all that other stuff. 
See how things go. Aren't even seriously played the football. That was another big loss there as the running back took the handoff and went way backwards. But I didn't see where the ball, there's the ball. At the 46 of the Crusaders. So the Patriots remain in Crusader territory. It's third down and forever, and we'll show you right there. He goes, the, there's the marker you see right there on your screen. Third down forever, and Montgomery rolling out to his left. He's going to take off, try to get some of these yards back, and he'll go out of bounds at the 41. Pushing one of the defenders on his way out. No flag coming out. And it's going to be fourth down for the Patriots. And let's see what they do here. No scuffles here between these two New York-based teams. After that, push out by Montgomery. Thought, you know, all the oohs and ahs and all that other stuff. You might have thought maybe there would have been some sort of scuffle, but got nothing. Time my Patriots. We'll take a look them right back. You're watching Big East Football on NBN. There is Jernigan. He is done for the day. He's heading home. He is able to walk out his own power, so we're glad to see that, and Patriots fans should be sure glad to see that. So if we'll be, we'll be playing in the Patriots, come back for the postseason on June 1st. A punch formation here for the Patriots. Oh, almost, almost blocked there by number one. And that one's going to take a bounce inside the 10. Can't see who has it, but he's wrapped up. Still going, spinning away from tackles. What a play there. And they'll find another whistle dead down about the 25. Patriots lead the Crusaders 22 to nothing. We have, we've had Patriots guys leave the game. We have Crusaders guys leave the game before the halftime. We didn't show that. We didn't really talk about it much, but there was one guy who was walking off the field, pads in his hand and everything. Had a few guys here for the Patriots leave as well, including Kadeem Wilson, who has left the building. His day is obviously done. He has got to get to get to work or whatever the case may be for him. We got a little bit of football to play here, though, folks. Not done just yet. Crusaders have the ball down 22 0. Let's see if they can be the 13th this year to score on the Patriot defense. Patriots have three turnovers in this game, including a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. Almost had a pick six, but it was called back due to penalty. Giving the Patriots ball, the Patriot offense the ball at the end of the half, but unfortunately, they were unable to come up with anything on that drive. And the only score here in the second half thus far has been that safety that we saw not too long ago. Let's see what the Crusaders can do here. Again, on their last drive, they punted, or they gave up the safety, and they had to give the ball back to the Patriots, who just gave the ball back moments ago. We're going to too much a little bit here, folks. Get as possible as we can here on the New England Broadcast Network. First down ball is at the 25 for the Crusaders. And a pitch out here. Number five. We're going to have an eight for And he's tripped up inside the 30, about the 32-yard line. So currently the biggest fitting as of right now. New York Patriots will be 6-0 and and the number one seed in the biggest football. Right behind them are the Empire State Wolfpack. They are currently at 4-2. and two. Not exactly sure who they're playing today. And you got the New York Crusaders, who I believe will be about 500 after this game. Or just under 500, one of the two. Then you have the Empire, you have the, uh, excuse me, the Staten Island Hurricanes and the Brooklyn Bengals right behind them. Both of those teams tied. A couple games under 500. And of course, you already mentioned the main Norseman season is over. They were unable to secure a game today. They held a little special something at, at a Deering High School in Portland. And the Westchester Steelers folded and will finish the season at 0 and 6. So, second down here, Giff. Well, gain half by game by half the yards they needed there on the last play. Well, the pitch out here to the running back number five, and he got nowhere to go. He's going back to the twenty-five. Go back to about the original line of scrimmage there, and so it'll be about third down and ten here for the Crusaders. So Dave Patterson will finish his final regular season with the New York Patriots. Excuse me. At 6-0, and undefeated, they'll be in a one seed, and they'll host the playoff game June 1st. Stay tuned for updates. We'll find out where, who the Patriots will be playing 
in that first semifinal matchup. And where they'll be playing as well. More likely than not, they'll be back here in New Rochelle. That's where they've been, play they've been playing their home games this season. It was the last year they played at SUNY Maritime in the Bronx, which had an absolute gorgeous view of the Varanaros Bridge. I believe it was Varanaros Bridge. Might have been another bridge. It's a beautiful bridge, folks. Go, go look it up. SUNY Maritime Football Field. And you'll see. It's on the, it's on the face of a, I believe it's a marine campus or whatever you call it. I can't think of words right now. But you get the point. Be absolutely beautiful. Rolling out, and the pass is caught there by the fullback, but he is falls down immediately. Number 85 falls down almost immediately. We say it should also be a football team. Uh, no, obviously, they're a football team. It should be a playoff team. Barring any catastrophic meltdown here or a miracle by the Brooklyn Bengals or the Staten Island Hurricanes. One of those two teams are going to be left out here in the semifinals. It's going to be the Bengals or the Hurricanes who will be eliminated from playoff contention here soon enough. I'll have to check out the schedule and see how all that works out. As far as who will be left out in the fifth team on the outside looking in when it's all said and done. But we do know the Patriots will be the number one overall seed. If our state Wolfpack will most likely host the playoff game. Crusaders will be on the road, probably against those same Wolfpack. Might have to go there for that game for the semifinal. And we'll see who the Patriots will play, either the Hurricanes or the Bengals. And I think the refs just called this game. We'll already just get confirmation here. The whistle's blown. Everybody's blowing whistles. Everybody's still on the field. And the game's not over yet. 22 nothing. Patriots lead the Crusaders. So again, should the Crusaders head down or wherever to Long Island, I think that might be the game any NBN will be at. We'll see if the Crusaders can pull off a mighty upset over the Empire State Wolfpack. Should be the last play of the game here. Cordero's going to roll out. Cut inside and nice pancake there. All right, let's see if that's it. Nope, it was fourth down, so the Crusaders give the ball back to the Patriot offense. Thought I heard the ref say game. I'm not exactly sure. Here's your offense once again back out there. Montgomery in a quarterback once more. So it should be. And I think that's it. And it is. Final score, New York Patriots defeat the New York Crusaders 22 to nothing. The New York Patriots for the New York Crusaders for Biggie's Football and for the New England Broadcast Network, I'm Stephen Err. Thank you all for joining us here. And we'll see you for the postseason. Good night from New Rochelle, New York.